Hello students, in my last lecture I had tried to give definitions of different terms related to a spherical mirror. Once again we see, suppose this is a spherical mirror and what is the midpoint of a spherical mirror? It is called pole and the center of the sphere of which the mirror given mirror is a part is center of curvature. The line joining the center of curvature to the pool is called principal axis and we had seen that a ridge of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection meet at a point really on the principal axis and this point is called focus or principal focus in the case of concave mirror what happens in the case of convex mirror in the case of convex mirror say rays of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection diverge in such a way that if it is proceeded in back then it appears to meet at a point and this point is called focus. Why we are reciting these things? Because there is very important relation between different physical quantities involved during solving problems of our spherical mirror. So see, the distance between center of curvature and pole, this distance is called the radius of curvature. A radius of curvature. The distance between center of, cur of curvature and pole, see here, this is the distance. In both mirrors, we are seeing side by side what is the meaning of a radius of curvature. So, the distance between center of, of curvature and pole of any spherical mirror is called radius of curvature. And the distance between focus and pole, this distance, the distance between focus and pole is called the focal length. This distance is called focal length. Focal length and it is represented by F. The radius of curvature is represented by R. In the case of convex, see, this is focal length here. The distance between pole and focus is called focal length and there is very important relation given in our book which is very useful that R is equal to 2F or F is equal to R by 2 that is focal length is equal to half of radius of curvature. Later on we shall use this relation during solving our numerical problems. Once again I remember the fact that I had assured you that I shall explain each and every activities given in our NCRT textbook. So see activity 10.3, activity 10.3 page 163 of our NCRT textbook. What is given here? In this activity is given that we take a concave mirror and put it towards the sun. Now, if we take a C top page and adjust this page to and fro, then what we see? We see that point size image of the sun forms at this page. And the distance between this point size image and pole gives us focal length. So, with this activity, we can measure roughly the focal length of a concave mirror. Again, in this activity, it is given that take a concave mirror, put it on a table, draw a straight line. Now, on this straight line, we take a candle. This candle is burning. Now move this candle towards the mirror 
and project the image of this candle on a screen and what we see we see that due to the movement of candle towards the mirror and away from the mirror the size shape and nature of image changes continuously and the nature of images at different conditions is given given in our table 10.1 page 164 of ncrt science book we said explain one by one what are the different conditions what is the nature what is the magnification what is the position of image formed by concave mirror already there are six cases but before that there are very important rules of in which we shall form images by a spherical mirror so see what are the rules of in which we shall trace ray diagrams to form images with the help of a spherical mirror that is representation representation of images formed by spherical mirrors dear students as during solving mathematical problems we follow certain rules we follow some formulas similarly for formation of images by spherical mirror also there are certain rules what are these first first rule is this that if we have a concave mirror this is a concave mirror this is pole this is center of curvature this is principal axis so any ray of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection from a concave mirror meet at a point on the principal axis and this point is called focus but what happens for convex we shall see both concave and convex mirrors side by side for convex mirror suppose this is pole this is our principal axis this is center of curvature then what happens here rays of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection diverge in such a way that when it is proceeded in back then it appears to come out from a point and this point is principal focus so rule number 1 now see in second rule what is given once again suppose this is a concave mirror this is principal axis this is pole center of curvature and focus the rays of light incident on concave mirror passing through its focus passing through its focus after reflection becomes parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis but what happens in the case of convex mirror see this is a convex mirror this is our principal axis this is pole this is center of curvature so if a ray of light incident on convex mirror in such a way that it appears to pass through its focus it is virtual case then after reflection these rays become parallel to the principal axis this is virtual case see here rays of light incident in such a way that it appears to pass through focus then after reflection these rays become parallel to the principal axis case number 3 this is concave mirror this is principal axis 
pole center of curvature now this is focus if a ray of light incident on concave mirror passing through its center of curvature see this is very unique case passing through center of curvature after reflection retraces its path and this is very important rule of geometry that line passing through the center of any circle becomes normal at any point of the circumference and i had stated you first day that whatever be the nature of the mirror in the case of plane mirror i had discussed you that rays of light normal to the surface of any mirror after reflection it reaches its path so the same property is repeated here here also this ray is normal and after reflection it retraces its path again suppose we have a convex mirror then what happens for convex mirror this is convex mirror this is our pole this is center of curvature so if any ray of light incidents in such a way that it appears to pass through its center of curvature it is virtual event then after reflection it retraces its path from this point finally fourth case states that fourth case is nothing it is law of reflection of light so in fourth case what will we see see this is concave mirror this is principal axis suppose this is pole this is center of curvature and if any ray of light incident at pole then it reflects by making the same angle of incidence that is angle r is equal to angle r here see the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane and here angle i is equal to angle r which we had discussed in our first lecture that is laws of reflection so laws of reflection is not are not only true for plane mirrors but for every mirrors now see what happens in the case of convex mirror this is our convex mirror this is principal axis this is pole this is center of curvature and once again here see if a ray of light incidents at pole then following the rule of reflection it reflects in such a way that once again this angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection dear students now with the help of these four special rays conditions we shall trace images with the help of concave mirror and with the help of convex mirror so first of all try to learn what are the rules obeyed by rays during formation of images with the help of spherical mirror dear students for our learning outcomes your active participation is very much required essential so before concluding my this lecture i give you some home assignment first draw re diagrams for the formation of images by spherical mirrors five times each five times each five five times because just seeing the synopsis you will not be able to trace 
ray diagrams so see it carefully and trace every diagram at least five times by doing so you will be confident and we shall be very in confident position to draw ray diagrams for image formation with the help of concave and convex mirror which we shall discuss in our next lecture once again dear students i would like to suggest you to subscribe our dab runi sadpur youtube channel and give message to all of your classmates because till date many of you have not given your whatsapp number to us when we connect you on our web broadcast then only 50 to 60 percent students have given their whatsapp number others number has not whatsapp facility so as we are trying up to the maximum extent to help you in the same way your cooperation is also required for your own classmates because this is the true help to your friends so be two friends and give message to all your classmates of our dfe family thank you thank you very much